Hello everyone, today we're talking about Zenker's Diverticulum. This is going to be a short video because this topic doesn't have a lot to talk about, but it is a high yield point for your USMLE and COMLEX board exams, as well as any GI pathology um, anatomy questions that you may have on your organ blocks in medical school or other um, schools that you're taking. <laughs> so Zenker's Diverticulum, classically the ethology, you're going to see this arise at Killian's Triangle, which is one of the weakest points of the esophagus. This is where the inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles on this graph that you can actually see is very nice. It's going to have this uh, area that's kind of exposed, uh, exposed esophagus, and it's going to be the thyropharyngeal and cricopharyngeal parts of the inferior pharyngeal constrictor. And that's what makes up Killian's triangle. And this blue dotted line is uh, basically kind of a graph that shows you where this uh, uh, Zenker's diverticulum would kind of pouch out to. So it's going to kind of droop over the middle portions of the esophagus. And remember that this is above the upper uh, esophageal sphincter. And this is going to be important when we're talking about uh, the symptoms that are associated with Zenker's diverticulum. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But remember that it is a false diverticulum. So it will only involve the mucosa and submucosa. Contrast this with a true diverticulum, such as Merkel diverticulum, um, uh, Mankel diverticulum. And so with this, that one, it is a true diverticulum because it's involving all layers of the GI tract. But while with Zenker's diverticulum, it's a false layer because it's only involving the upper two. Diagnosis of Zenker's diverticulum is usually going to be based on your patient history before you go into any kind of imaging. And so the patient will likely, so if you're having a vignette or you're working up a patient that you um, have any difficulty swallowing with, um, the patient will uh, complain about this gurgling in their throat. Uh, they will talk about maybe they're regurgitating foods or liquids. There will be aspiration where food is going down the wrong pipe, if you will. So it's going down the trachea instead. Uh, they're going to get halitosis, which is bad breath because the food that is stuck in this pouch is going to decompose. And because of that, it's going to cause that um, really bad smell of breath. And as it progresses and enlarges, because Zenker's diverticulum doesn't just stop at like one little point, it's going to get larger as time progresses. It's a slow progression. It'll retain more and more food, um, creating an even worse and worse breath. Um, and they may even say that, hey, doc, you know, I'm been brushing my teeth so much lately that I feel like they're so sparkly clean, but I always have bad breath. So this is another big sign of that. Um, if it is bad enough, you can actually see a protrusion in the neck and it can sometimes be seen on physical exam. And it is more common in older elderly males. So if you have a high clinical suspicion, so you got a good history, establish a high clinical suspicion that this patient does have Zenker's diverticulum, you're going to want to do a barium contrast study. So they're going to swallow barium and you're going to take a nice little image of their esophagus. And lo and behold, you can actually see there is a nice big pouch right there. And so this is a confirmatory test for Zenker's diverticulum. So the barium contrast study is the big one for this. And it's a good idea to actually do this before um, EGD because you don't want to risk uh, perforation if you're going down there with a scope. And then you kind of come down into this area where <laughs> there's a pouch and then you just kind of blow right into it. Because remember, this is a uh, false diverticulum, so it's going to be uh, just those two layers. So it's going to kind of be easy to uh, perforate. And uh, that's about it, folks. There's uh, not much else to talk about with uh, Zenker's diverticulum. Like I said, a uh, quick video, and I just wanted to throw this out there so that people know what to, think, what to expect with this. So as always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like the video, and let me know down in the comments below what we should do next. Thanks, guys.